Hi, I'm Dustin Mason from Performance Lexus in St. Catharines. And today we're doing a video that you asked for in the comments, and that is the Toyota Grand Highlander versus the Lexus TX. Is there a big enough difference to settle the $10,000 price thing? But before I get into that, make sure you hit like and subscribe for more Lexus related content. Starting with the front end on the Grand Highlander. So for once we have more of a spindle grille on the Toyota than we do on the Lexus. With a very tall silhouette on that front end, as well as a really sharp drop off. There's not much angular to the bumper or the grille. And you'll see a little bit of piano black, a little bit of gray sort of tied in at the end body color for the rest of it. And it's sort of split into two. We have this spindle lower section here body and then sort of a, a plastic top section that doesn't actually have any airflow through it so it's totally blocked off that's something we've seen in a lot of the lineup and most of it is just for aerodynamics above that we have a classic toyota symbol which doesn't look to be heated from what i can tell and i think that's because they don't have the sensor in there anymore we have a chrome strip going from left to right and then just a little bit extra body before the hood i did notice the hood has two very big body lines that sort of kind of go in terms of vision that you can see when you're driving. But let's compare it to the TX. So the TX actually has less of a spindle grill than the Toyota, which is starting to happen. But a couple of years ago, I've been very surprised by that. And we have a lot more body color here. You can see this one's gray. There still is a little bit of black inserts in the center and a little bit of textured on the bottom. But other than that, it's pretty much all the same color. And it has that sort of like frameless spindle grill design is what they're calling it. I think they're going this way because of the way that EV cars look. You'll notice when you see a lot of EV cars like the e-tron or the RZ, it doesn't have much of a grill. It's mostly just blocked off for aerodynamics. And the TX is sort of looking that way. We do have this little chrome part at the top, but it's not shiny chrome. It's sort of like a brushed metallic, uh, which I really like. And then a little bit of venting here, which is actually real, I just noticed. So it is real and it's not blocked off like on the Toyota, which is very interesting because they're on the same platform. So it's a little bit of difference is there even with airflow. And then we have the body color up here with the new Lexus logo. They call it, I think the Lexus logo 2.5. And what it is, is a slimmer, thinner L album. And the reason they went with that is to make it more aerodynamic not just for fuel economy, but also things like turbulence and wind noise, which is very thoughtful if you ask me. As we get up to the hood line, there isn't as much of an aggressive line that goes all the way to the front bumper. We do have a little bit of a curvature that starts sort of like three quarters of the way up and then goes into a vision line going to the back. But the biggest difference between the two is actually when the headlights are on. As we start to turn on things like the headlights, we can see some of the differences start to unfold. For instance, they both have the same functionality of the, you know, amber sort of like signals and blinker lights integrated into that beautiful LED daytime running light. However, the lights themselves look very different once you get up close to them. In fact, even from far away, they look really different with the Lexus L emblem sort of stretched all the way from the side quarter panel into the center and the Toyota with the same idea, just chunked down a lot smaller. And the details are a little bit different as well. The LED sort of lens on the Toyota looks a little bit less LED and more like a, like, a, like a slightly frosted lens with some texture to it, where on the Lexus, it just looks a little bit sharper. And I don't mean in terms of styling, I mean like the color looks sharp and like the edges look sharp. And actually I would say it's brighter as well, even just seeing it reflect off of me the Lexus is a lot brighter for that daytime running light and for the signal. But they both have the same idea. It's just gonna be a little bit more stylish, I think, on the Lexus one. So let's look under the hood where I think there's going to be more similarities than differences. On the Lexus, you can simply just raise it up and it's on damper, so it opens quite easily. However, on the Toyota one, we have the classic sort of hood and rod that you have to sort of find and prop open. I always used to joke when I worked for Toyota that the reason they did that was because you're never under the hood anyway, because Toyotas never break down. I don't know if that's the real reason, but that's what I tell people. So looking underneath, we have the same, on these two models anyway, 
the same four cylinder 2.4 liter turbo engine. I, I did notice that on the Lexus, it stated at 275 horsepower and on the Toyota, it's 265, which sounds confusing at first. But when I look at the gas caps, it actually says premium gas for the Lexus, but I can't find anywhere that says the Toyota has to have premium gas. So that could be the difference of 10 horsepower right there. Okay, I have something to tell you. Underneath the hood, pretty much everything is the same on the Toyota Grand Highlander versus the Lexus TX. Except I did find a few differences that I had to look very close for. One of them being this. When you knock on the Lexus versus knocking on the Toyota, the Toyota just has a little bit extra ring to it, which tells me the Lexus might just have some extra sound deadening in that hood that you see. Also, there is a little bit more plastic sort of around the headlights, and I think that has to do with the fact the shape of the headlights is a little bit different and a little bit bigger. So we have a bit more plastic under here, as well as some mechanisms to open up the hood instead of using the prop rod. But other than that, the only thing they really did was switch the Lexus logo for a Toyota logo. Okay, let's look at the side profile. So on the Toyota Highlander, in the limited package, so the fully loaded gas model, we have a 20 inch multi-spoke sort of hyper silver, maybe gunmetal type wheel here, which is on a all season Yokohama tire. And we have sort of the textured plastic just going around as well. And as we pay attention to some of the other details on the side profile, we have textured plastic sort of here going into the window. We have chrome on the bottom of the windows, but textured plastic on the top. And the door handles are just the classic Toyota design where you pull them and they open, nothing really to write home about there. But the size and the body lines is really good to talk about. So we have this really nice body line here that sort of goes and sweeps up to the massive rear window, which is great for that third row. As I mentioned, I'm about six foot one and you can see how tall the side of the Grand Highlander really is, especially this back door. Again, a very full size glass going into that second row and still a very upright position on the front row. Other than that, nothing else to really write home about. We have textured plastic at the bottom of both doors, which is always really good to sort of protect it from stones and dirt and stuff like that and a roof rail that's almost like a brushed aluminum metallic type look. Over to the TX. So to start things off, we have a 22 inch wheel on this TX executive that we're showing today. And with that, we have a continental tire. The plastic around the, the wheel well is painted. It's not on the textured plastic like we saw with the Grand Highlander, but the body lines are exactly the same. Even this swooping motion right here is textbook the exact same that goes all the way to the back of the vehicle on the mirror itself we have a bit more chrome on the bottom and even the little fin here beside the mirror is painted plastic on the tx we're on the grand highlander it was textured plastic we have chrome at the top instead of the bottom so that's a little bit of a difference there but most importantly my favorite lexus feature right now which is the electronic door latch so instead of the classic door handle we have sort of the electronic version. And if you've seen any of my other videos, what I love so much about it is when you exit the vehicle. So instead of having to pull a handle and like use your elbow and arm to get out, you're just gonna squeeze that electronic door latch and push in one motion. And it's pretty much across the whole Lexus lineup and I absolutely love it. And actually, we should do that test real quick. I'm just gonna shut the door on both of these. They're both equally as solid. There really isn't a difference there. As we get to the back of the vehicle, we have the black glass and the black painted sort of trim along it. But other than that, nothing else to really write home about. Oh, I should mention the bottom of the two doors is painted plastic. It's not, it's not the textured plastic like we saw on the Grand Highlander. So most of the differences are little, but they are there. Okay, so let's compare the back of the TX. So you'll see, we have this new taillight design that sort of underlines the L-E-X-U-S new Lexus emblem. I've always really liked that. I think the fact that it goes from one side of the vehicle to the other really captures your eye. And I love that it underlines that Lexus. Now let's open it up. So inside, we do have power folding rear seats. So there's two switches off to the left-hand side that you can fold down that third row 
as you please. We also have some grocery hooks and mainly just a little outlet that you can plug in your cooler and stuff like that. And enough space for seven carry-on luggage bags, which I have tried myself and works. We also have this uh, cargo net as well as a cargo cover that sort of usually you would only use if you have that third row down, but it still is in there. Otherwise, it opens and closes very quickly, pretty smooth. And also at the back, we have an exposed wiper, which I forgot to mention. It's not like the RX where the wiper is nicely tucked in. It is at the bottom, but no big deal there. And you'll notice you can't really see the exhaust pipes. Those are pretty much tucked under there, which is something what we've seen in the market for the last little bit because EV cars might be the future and they don't have exhaust pipes. So it's kind of future proofing so that the car doesn't look super old. So at the back of the Grand Highlander, I am happy to say that it is a little bit different. So we have the taillight that sort of wraps around just the section and it doesn't go all the way across. We also have the word Grand Highlander spelled out, but it's body color. So you can't really see that until you get up close, but it is actually raised, which is kind of cool. It doesn't seem to be just like a sticker that's stuck on. It's part of that tailgate. We have the classic Toyota emblem above that, the limited in the bottom right corner, some textured plastic on the bottom bumper, as well as some colored plastic underneath, and still the exposed wiper and hidden exhaust pipes. But in the back, you will see, we have the same amount of cargo space. Uh, this one has the, the cargo cover accessory or the, the cargo mat, I should say. And back there, we also have the JBL sound system where it's Mark Levinson on the TX. Other than that, it's pretty much the same with the exception that the back seats are not power folding, I noticed. So there's a button on the Lexus to fold them, but on the Toyota, it's just a lever that you sort of pull up and it releases it and you can just fold it down just like the old fashioned way. Not a big deal unless you really need the power ones. Then that's important. So jumping into the back of the Grand Highlander, I already noticed a massive difference between the TX and the Grand Highlander, and that is the Grand Highlander has three seats in that third row, where the TX only has two seats. So that aside, back here, we have some hard plastic, a couple cup holders, some USB ports on either side, as well as ample space. I'm six foot one. In the center, I'm touching a little bit. But on both sides, I have a little bit extra headroom, it seems. Just, it just sounds, it feels like the center is raised a little bit. But other than that, decent amount of amenities back here, decent amount of space, and nothing too crazy. But I will say, what I did notice was getting into the back, you have to do a little bit more manual moving of that second row, where on the TX, it does have a power option to release. So that was the difference of getting into the back. So the third row of the TX, as I mentioned, has two seats instead of three. And because of that, it makes it feel a little bit less crammed. The TX was all about having every seat be the best seat. And I think that's what they did for that third row is to just have as much comfort and space as possible. Another surprise though, is even the cup holder layout on the TX is different than the Grand Highlander. And what I mean by that is we have a cup holder and a cup holder and then a tablet holder sort of integrated into the same little area. And we have the power switch so that I can like move forward or recline back. Actually, I can recline very far back in the TX because of that is power. Other than that, oh, I did notice also the, the armrests are padded and leather in the TX, which is very surprising. I thought that this third row would be where the most similarities would be but it seems to be a still a decent amount different in terms of the way those amenities are presented, I guess you could say. So sitting in the second row of the Grand Highlander, the door panel itself is very different from the Lexus TX. We have a little bit of a, not, not a cup holder, it specifically says it's not a cup holder, but it's maybe like a juice box holder or something, I don't know, in here. We have sort of just mostly textured plastic, a little bit of the injected and soft molded uh, plastic or, or leather. So I will notice that the door panel at the bottom is where the speaker is. And on the Lexus, it's a smaller speaker up higher. We have a little bit of a pocket towards the bottom and the curtain that goes up on both this one and the Lexus. So little differences, mainly just a different door panel, not for better or for worse. Okay, sitting inside in the second row here, everything seems pretty great. I have lots of headroom as well. The controls for the seat 
are the same on both models, it seems, where it's all manual, it's sort of at the bottom here with the quick release at the top to be able to get out. In terms of space, I have lots of space. I have a center armrest because this is the captain's chairs model. And in the center, I have this little removable sort of council here that does have tablet holders on the side. So we have two cup holders and then tablet holders on each side with a little other little landing area here. And that clips in to the center. We do have heated seats on these two captain's chairs all controlled by sort of a central little climate zone for the third climate zone in the center here. And there's USB-C's on the side with a wall outlet AC adapter plug sort of at the bottom there. Okay, sitting in the second row of the TX, as I mentioned, the door panels are a little bit different. We have a little bit more softer material, understandably sort of broken up along the outside. We have a little bit of a grippy handle on the inside of that door handle and here is the electronic door latch that I mentioned where you can just exit using one swooping motion. We have a pretty deep cavity in the bottom as well as a speaker at the top. Now the Mark Levinson speaker sound system is more about having the speakers closer to the listeners. So that could be why it's not at the bottom, it's, it's more closer to ear level. We have the same sort of curtain that goes up and down as well. It's all manual and it hooks in. So pretty similar, just a little bit different layout. Okay, sitting in here, I forgot to mention, you'll notice in the inside of the TX, there's all these little microphones everywhere. And what that's for is active noise canceling. I don't know if the Highlander has it. I didn't do enough research, but I know the TX has it. And it's kind of like when you put on your Bose or Dre Beats or whatever on an airplane to drown out the noise of the jet engines and the air moving over the aircraft and stuff. The TX has that built in and it uses a bunch of microphones for that. So you will see that when you sit in the TX, there's all these little microphones everywhere. Okay, I will say that the council is a little different. So it sells the tablet holders, but the cup holders are removable. The TX has removable cup holders and I think that's pretty cool. So that's the main difference of the council. Okay, sitting in the seat, we have a little bit of Alcantara, ultra suede sort of like lining the sides of the seats and the second row is cooled and heated. So that's a big difference between the TX and the Grand Highlander. That is all controlled by the same center little council here. And the US, it still has two USB-Cs, but they're lower and there's like a little shelf. So you can plug in your phone and then put it on a shelf. And that's all in the center here. Other than that, pretty much the same. I have lots of sort of headroom. I have lots of leg room and the controls are the same on the side and bottom of the seat with the exception that the quick release is a button instead of a lever at the top. Okay, so sitting in the Lexus TX, I'm not gonna get into all the electronics. You can read a lot of that in the brochure and the feature sheets, but let me tell you about some of the observations that I have. So in the center, we have the butterfly armrest that you can, is designed so that if the driver is leaning on it, the passenger can still open the glove or the side of it, not disturb the driver and still be able to get a juice box or Kleenex box out. It is a decent size. We have the removable cup holders up here. And it's cool because since they're modular, you can move them and put, put different things there instead of just cup holders. So that's pretty cool that you can do that and it's easy to clean. We have a different shifter where you just sort of like put it in drive and it, and it like snaps back to the center. This was first introduced on like the LC and the LS. So that's what the TX has. We have some different terrain mode buttons and auto off and stuff like that, just in this little cluster right here, but it's not in the way, it's not obnoxious, anything like that. The wireless charger port is up front in front of the shifter and it slides forward to unveil a carpeted other cavity that you can put things in. And then above that, we have three USB-C ports. Two of them are just for fast charging. One of them is to connect to the actual radio. And then we have some buttons for the auto park and the bird's eye view and stuff like that. We have our climate control integrated into the Lexus interface and you can customize a lot of what you see and it's super easy to use. Fit and finish wise, even the steering wheel has very nice soft leather with a heads up display, meaning intelligent buttons on the steering wheel, whatever it's called. But that shows you on the heads up display and you can customize those. I have a whole video about that that you should check out. And we have piano black sort of around the gauge cluster with a super sharp, very digital gauge cluster. It's one of my favorite in the lineup right now. You can change it to different pages that are sort of preset. 
and I just find it to be very HD on the TX, actually one of the most. On the front door panels, we have a speaker pod above all the switches, and again, that's to get those speakers close to your ears, and I really like that. We have some ambient lighting, a little bit of a layered dash, ooh, and an electronic rear view mirror. So you can flip a switch, and that makes it so that a camera turns on at the very back, and that way, if you have a lot of tall people in the car, you can still see what's going on behind you. And it does have really good thigh support. So the seat can extend out, which again, being six foot one, is really nice to have a really comfortable seat when it comes to like support for long drives. Okay, so sitting in the Grand Highlander, I will say this is my first time in the Grand Highlander, and I already found a bunch of things that I really like. One of them is the wood grain. So on the door panel, and it sort of ties into the dash just a little bit, we have this very Ikea, gray, modern wood grain. I like it, I think it brings a little bit of dimension to the interior, especially because it's lighter and there's a black interior. And it's very smooth and kind of nice to touch. I know it sounds silly, there's gonna be a lot of hate in the comments, but I do like it. Another thing I like is there's a lot of buttons. In the Lexus lineup, we've noticed that they've gotten rid of buttons because of everything's supposed to be very calming and you know soothing to look at and just hidden. And Toyota has done the opposite. There's buttons everywhere, including the climate control, which is all up here. And it's physical buttons that you press, which is super rare, I find. So I do really like that. Even the seat are buttons where on the Lexus, it's all sort of in the screen and makes it very automated. So that's cool. We still have a volume knob, which is also a very good analog sort of feature. Other than that, the armrest slash glove box, center glove box, is different. So it sort of slides into itself. It's still softly molded plastic. Actually, I'm just realizing something. Even when I worked at Toyota in 2015, the Highlander had an armrest like this where it slid. So that must be a Highlander and Grand Highlander type feature but it's very practical. We have a bunch of buttons above that. Sport, eco, normal, mud and sand. All of those things are right here with a snow mode and a downhill assist mode. So all of your drive modes are sort of in this very reachable. If you're driving in your arm is here, you can press those very quickly. So that's cool. We have a couple cup holders that don't remove, but they're there and they're asymmetrical, which is interesting, but I'm sure it would still fit the same size cups, a little bit of a shelf here with a wireless charging pad that's sort of fixed, a couple USB-Cs and a USB-C over there. In fact, I remember that from a Highlander from the past where they have this shelf here for the passengers and they put a USB-C there. So that's very thoughtful of them. So you can plug in your phone and put it on the shelf. Other than that, we have this screen. It is smaller than Lexus or it seems smaller at least. And the definition is a little different as well. I find it's not like it's delayed, um, but it does have the same noise as the classic Toyota where it's like a beep. And I know the Lexus is just a little bit quicker. It's more like a Gorilla glass. It's very similar though. I would say that they're both, they're both very close. Same with the gauge cluster. We don't have a heads up display, meaning we just have regular sort of steering wheel controls here, but it still shows you what you want to do. There's still lots of information. You can customize it by the looks of it. So very easy. The cruise control button is the exact same on both. I can tell you that much right now. It looks the same. It's in the same spot. It looks like, oh, the heated steering wheel button is actually off to the left. So you don't have to do that to any screen or anything like that. The start button is lower and the shifter is more of like an actual like, like you're actually putting it in gear instead of the Lexus one, which is more digital feeling. Other than that, not a whole lot different. The door handles do feel a little different and there's like more of like a rough carpet inside instead of like soft touch. But for the most part, very functional the Grand Highlander is. So ask yourself this, is the Lexus TX worth the extra price tag versus the Toyota Grand Highlander? In my opinion, it comes down to this. The Toyota Grand Highlander has a lot of function. We have a lot of you know, features that will be functional for a family as well as rugged enough to withstand all the abuse it's gonna take. And the TX is one word, refinement. Even the fact that the third row on the TX only seats two people, where the same space on the Grand Highlander seats three. It just tells you that to me, the TX is more about refinement and experience rather than the functionality of the Grand Highlander. And to me, I might be biased, but it's worth the extra price tag. Even the attention to detail on the materials inside, 
not to mention the extra features you get, as well as the extra styling. To me, the TX is worth the extra money. But let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm Dustin Mason from Performance Lexus in St. Catharines. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, make sure you hit like and subscribe for more content like this. And let me know if there's any other comparisons you would like to see in the future. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next time.